In this video, I'll describe a few simple tips for creating high quality online learning for everyone. The first tip is to set, to set the tone for an inclusive classroom. Here are some ways you can do this. First, recognize your position, power, and privilege and openly communicate with your students. Second, establish norms that encourage a sense of belonging for all students. To foster connectedness and promote empathy, for example, dedicate five minutes in each class for people to pair up with another classmate to talk about how they are doing. Third, Demonstrate vulnerability and normalize the sense of discomfort and disruption that students are experiencing. Fourth, check in with students about how they are coping and identify any needs they have related to remote learning or other support. Fifth, reflect on your course content and how it can be more inclusive. For example, provide multiple perspectives on each topic by selecting content by authors of diverse backgrounds or perspectives. Sixth, Validate students, their experiences, and their ability to be successful. Seventh, and most of all, connect with students and build relationships, making the time to foster community. On the DGH Intranet site, we've included some resources on concrete things you can do to ensure your class is more inclusive. The second tip is to streamline your course organization and navigation in Canvas. Students get frustrated if they cannot find key information easily, especially when you are not around to ask. Make it easy for them. Canvas has a great layout for navigation. For example, the home page for this course is clean, welcoming the students and giving hyperlinks to key information on the course pages. A bad example of poor course organization is having everything on one page, namely the front page. This is overwhelming to the students. We recommend you make it easy on yourself and use our template to organize your content. The template takes advantage of Canvas features and uses best practices in designing an online course. This template is available for you to import into your Canvas course. Watch one of our other videos on how to apply our template to your course. The third tip is to be proactive and show that you're optimistic that students can succeed. This is a tough environment not only to teach in, but also to learn in. Show understanding and compassion for your students in every interaction. Know what resources exist at the UW and in your department to support students, and make these available to students who may need them. The fourth tip is to demonstrate compassion. This tip is especially important now. If you don't hear from students, don't assume that everything is okay. Recognize that a lot of students may have a variety of reasons why a course might be hard. Acknowledge the grieving process that we are all going through. Be flexible and keep an open mind and heart for each student's specific situation. Your students may have young children in the house or may be caring for sick family members. In spring quarter, students mentioned that they appreciated when faculty checked in during class time about the situation, the pandemic, and the protests against police brutality and racism. This is a highly stressful time for many and is not the time for strict policies and inflexible requirements. Be proactive with your communication to your students beyond communicating about the syllabus and course requirements. This brings us to the fifth tip. Be flexible, both with your students and with your expectations. While learning is a priority, it may not be feasible or reasonable to expect all students can dedicate themselves as rigorously as they might under different circumstances. Let students know how you plan to be flexible and understanding of their needs. You may also need to be flexible with technology. Zoom may crash. You may forget to turn on a feature in Zoom that you plan to use, such as the breakout rooms or screen sharing feature. You may not have posted something correctly in Canvas. Be flexible and compassionate with yourself. You are learning. While it is helpful to have a backup plan for when things like this happen, expect the unexpected as you learn how to teach online. Be honest with your students and have a sense of humor around this. Do your best to call upon your co-instructors or TAs to help, or even the students if possible. One key way to mitigate some of these issues is to practice what you want to do prior to the session with the TA or even with your family and friends, to make sure you understand how to navigate the features and settings 
and how to explain to the students what you want them to do. Finally, be flexible about the use of video during Zoom sessions. Some students may prefer to have their video off, and not all students have a separate or quiet working space. The last tip is to be present by checking in with your students more frequently than you would in an in-person course. This will show students that you respect their time and care about them. Use students as resources for improvement. Do they have ideas for activities that build on or improve what you are already doing? Can you engage the students to help in some way? For example, can some students help facilitate questions that appear in the chat? Ask them how you are doing teaching online. For example, how do they feel the Zoom sessions are going? Learn how to improve on what you are doing. Soliciting student feedback and getting their help in the live sessions may increase their commitment to the online environment and help them feel more engaged. On the DGH intranet page, you will find many more resources for Zoom, Canvas, and online course design. For faculty and TAs in the Department of Global Health, you can contact edgh at uw.edu for help or questions related to course design. Thank you.